Hello everyone, this is Chris Keys. Today I'm going to show you how I use the iPad Pro to draw fashion illustrations. If you all recall, I did a video a year ago about the iPad Pro and why I returned it. Uh, I did not like that I couldn't use it for things like Photoshop and Illustrator, but since then people have left a ton of comments under that video showing me and giving me tips on how I can use this in other ways, especially for fashion illustration. So I'm giving it another try and so far so good. I really love this app called Tawasui along with the Apple Pencil. Um, it is really quick and really sufficient for fashion illustration. So I'm going to give you step by step on how I use this to do a fashion illustration. I'm going to be drawing this picture that I found on Pinterest. I will find the, the reference for the picture and leave it in the description box, but I'm going to draw this illustration step by step. All right, so here we go. You have your layers and I always try to use the, the second to the last layer. If you use the bottom layer, then when you, when you delete the layer, um, there's no background. So if you wanted to have like a transparent background, that's absolutely fine. But I try to use the layer where it's just going to be on a white background. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the outline of her body using just a flesh tone pen. So I'm just going to go over here to my colors and you can see that you can just hold down the color and it'll take you to a few different other colors. So I'm just going to choose like a, a tan color flesh tone. Click add. Let me just make sure I'm on the right layer. All right. And I'm just going to outline the shape of her body. So this is a circle for her head, a line for her neck. And then we'll go down to her shoulders and we'll follow her spinal cord. And then we'll just create like a little, a little line maybe for her, her hip or pelvic area. And then I will go out to illustrate her legs. And then a little indentation for her feet. All right, so that's pretty much all we need outlined. So I'm just gonna turn down the opacity of this layer. So you just go to the layer, you go to the layer options, which is this little toolbar wheel on the left side of the layer. And then I'm just gonna take the opacity down. This is probably down to about 25 or 30% so I can draw on top of it. All right, so I'm just gonna go to a new layer I'm going to change the color to black and then I'm going to start to draw her features in and the easy thing about this is that I already have the outline of her body that's the most important thing is to just draw the outline first and of course if once you start getting used to drawing the body you can stop drawing an outline you don't have to do that but this is what I still use to this day even though I've been illustrating for years, it just helps to, it helps to give you composition and it helps to just make the illustration flow a lot faster. Okay, so I'm just going to draw her face. She's showing her profile. Okay. You can see some of her eyes showing. And then I'm just going to draw her neck. And I always like, oh, let me show you guys the erase, the how to undo. So these two arrows in the top right corner is how you undo and redo. So if I want to put it back, I just click the arrow going to the right. If I wanted to go backwards, then I just click the arrow going to the left. So I always like to do the neck um, a little bit more dramatic than what it usually is. So I'm just going to put a straight longer line than she has the line for the back of her neck and then I'm just going to draw the shoulders and then the top of the torso been elongated and guys the great thing about fashion illustration and the great thing about looking at a photo is that you can just use the photo for a reference it does not you do not have to copy 
a picture verbatim. Once you get confident in the composition and the composition that you want, um, like I said, I like the, the neck a little bit longer than usual. I, I usually like the hair a little bit more dramatic than a normal, normal person would wear their hair. You can just take the wheel and run with it. All right, so I'm going to make the torso just a little bit longer, but maybe I'll cut it off here. All right, and then we're going to make this dramatic, um, this dramatic dress that she has on. All right, so I'm just literally, I'm not even picking up my pen off of the iPad. Then I'm going to create a few more ruffles, loose lines at the bottom so that it looks like it's more volume on her skirt. Okay, so now all we have to do is to draw her legs. So I'm going to draw the leg that's closest, furthest away. And you can also, you can also remove this toolbar because sometimes it gets in the way. I, I like to fill up the whole page. So you can remove this toolbar by clicking this little 90 degree angle in the left bottom corner. So I'm just gonna get that out of the way. Take her legs down. I'm gonna draw the bottom leg. And then I'm just gonna draw her boots. And like I said, I always run off the page so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to stuff that at the bottom of the page I'm just gonna act like her feet her shoes are going off the bottom of the page which is just as fine All right, so we're literally letting the rest of the page be up to the imagination of the viewer. All right, so what I want to do is I want to take away our first layer, the layer that I use to outline her body. So I'm just going to click on the layer and I'm going to click this eye tool to remove it. So that we won't get confused on any lines or anything like that. So now what I want to do, and you can create this in a new layer if you want to. A lot of times I like to have a layer for the body, a layer for the facial features, and then a layer for the hair. And then if I'm putting any color onto the, any patterns of color onto the, onto the clothes, then I have a layer for the, the clothes or a layer completely for color. But I'm just going to create it in the same layer. So I'm just going to. Give her hair a bit of a funky do. Like it's going out. I'm also going to give her some earrings. And a bit of a necklace out. On this picture, you cannot see the arms. See, this is like a a silhouette of a girl so I want her to have some arms <laughs> and I don't want the arms to you could do an arm kind of coming into a pocket maybe that'll work or you could just have the arms just like falling down now the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean this up so I'm just going to take my eraser tool the eraser tool is the fourth uh, item from the bottom of the toolbar and I'm going to take the smaller so they have they have different sizes and different um, not widths but different strengths of the eraser I'm just going to take the second one 
and I'm going to start to erase any marks that I don't want visible. So maybe, I actually think that's all I want to erase. Yeah, that's all I want to erase. And then I'm just going to go in to her face and just put in a few more details. Give her some eyelashes. All right, now to me, that is just complete. Maybe I'll take the eraser tool and get this line here. I think I erased too much. All right, that's a smaller eraser. All right. Okay, so we're good to go. The last thing I'm going to do is I want to just go ahead and put some color onto her. So I'm going to take another layer. And you can see that they have instructions popping up all the time. So I'm going to take this new layer and I'm going to create some type of textile or something onto her onto her shirt and onto her dress. So you, as you can see, you see the image, the original image, and you can see that it's already being taken somewhere completely different. So that's a great way to use inspiration, but do not copy it verbatim because the image belongs to whatever photographer created the image. You know, whoever, whoever took that picture, that image belongs to them. So there's no need to copy it verbatim because you don't own the rights. I don't own the rights to the image. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create sort of like a floral print onto her, onto her top. And then maybe we'll just let the bottom be a little bit of sparkle or something. So I'm just going to create some thin lines with this navy blue color. And I'm just going a few different ways with this. With my pen, I'm going to take the smaller brush tool. And I'm going to go back to the bigger brush tool and I'm going to start to create flower petals. And the Apple Pencil works just like a paintbrush. So I'll show you on the side. If I'm, I'm gonna hold the pencil lightly in the middle of the pencil. And you can see how loose that is. And then I'm gonna hold it harder. So you can see how, how you can get different like weights or different uh, widths of line that's even that's even harder but this is a loose so you can get a very smooth feel or you can get a really hard feel all right so i just wanted to show you guys that i'm going to erase this i should have did it on another level i on another layer okay back to our flower paintings i just wanted to show you guys that all right here we go All right, so I'm going to go in with, let's see what color we want to use. I'll use an orange color. And create some more flowers on here. So you really can go crazy with creating um, texture and 
patterns and I'm just using one brush so there are as you can see all these brushes that are popping up there are tons of different types of brushes that you can use to create texture and as a matter of fact let's just play with one of them so this is a pencil brush it has a different type of texture I'm going to turn the opacity down for this one So as you can see, this is creating another texture and that's the key to getting these digital drawings to look realistic is just to play with the different, the different types of brushes because if you were coloring on watercolor paper then these textures would just happen naturally because watercolor paper is textured and then your with your brush marks on it is just going to become textured. So play along with this this is also they also have watercolor brushes in here and I'll do a whole nother video on how to use the watercolor brushes because I'm still learning to be honest okay so you get the point all right so for the bottom of the skirt maybe I'll just continue to use this brush Go back to this layer and have a darker tone of orange. And I'm just going to put bring in another tone of blue into this painting with this illustration. I'm just going to create a few lines for sparkle in the earrings. All right, guys, and that is pretty much that's pretty much it. That's how I create digital paintings on the iPad Pro. And I want to thank you guys for the people who commented on the video. Like I said, I had the iPad Pro a year ago and I took it back. So the people who gave me tips on other programs to use, I'm still slowly people are still giving me programs that I can use on the iPad Pro almost every single day so I'm still trying it out still figuring out how to work this this is just an app that I absolutely love and it has been a lifesaver so far for commissions um, if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below if you have any suggestions on other apps that I can use savers so far for commissions um, if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below if you have any suggestions on other apps that I can use within the iPad Pro for sketching or for illustrating especially if you have an idea of an app that works similar to Photoshop please leave it in the comment section and I will see you guys on the next video have a wonderful week ciao